Happy Tuesday. It's a little wet here today. It's kind of drippy outside. Like it's not really raining and it's not really drizzling. I don't even know what you call it. I just say it's it's just drippy out there. It's kind of gross. It's a good day to just go home and take a nap. Like, I don't know. It's all cloudy and ugh. My older son loves weather like this. This is favorite. This is his favorite kind of weather. I said, that's your, I don't know what the hell that is. Your Scotch Irish jeans coming out or something. You like this shit? No, thank you. No, I want summertime to come back. I hate cold weather. I, I hate it. Hate it. But here we are. I just went and dropped off the presents for the sixth angel. I kind of, I'm trying to dodge the little showers that keep popping up. Um, like it'll, it'll rain and then it'll stop for a little bit and then it'll rain. So I spent the morning at home doing stuff for my day job and the, the rain kind of, now it's just kind of drippy. Now it's, now, now it's kind of drizzling. It just changes every few minutes. But I had, okay, so I had to go four different times to drop off presents. I went to drop off presents for number five, the fifth angel, and then I went and pr dropped off presents for the two girls, and then I went again to drop off the presents for the two boys, and then I had to go again today to take the sixth angel's presents. Let's see, three of those four times, including today, the same thing happened. So I pull up out front, and I am struggling, right? So I use these giant, these oversized gift bags, the big plastic, like you cover a bicycle with. You can get them at Dollar Tree for $1.25 and they're huge and they're durable and they're pretty and they have these nice little patterns on them. You know, they're nice. It's like a fancy trash bag. It's like a fancy lawn and leaf bag. But I think it's, it's good for me to help me get the presents in there and it's good for whoever's coming to pick up the presents because it gives them an easier way to transport everything. And I also got smart this time and I used a lot, I just took one of my laundry baskets to put all the presents in to get them in the car. I wait until I get there to put them in the bag. Just, it's a little bit less jostling around of the presents in the bag, and, you know. So, um, so I get there. Sometimes people will help me with the door, sometimes they won't. There's a little plate up on the wall on the outside of the building that you can push to help, you know, to open the door. And I can, I can get my leg up there, no problem, to push it. And usually somebody will make a remark about, wow, look at that or something. But I, I can. I can I can lift it straight up and push it. It's practice. I practice my balance and stuff all the time. So, And I'm thinking, well, I appreciate the compliment, but you could have, you know, you could have smacked that plate for me and opened the door. But I have people just push in front of me. It irritates me. People... A lot of people just have no damn manners. But anyway, so I get in there, right? And I try to get up to the front desk to tell them, you know, I have I have some stuff here for one of the angel tree kids. Three of the four times that I went up there, so I am, this time I went in with no presents at first. I just went in to say, hey, I'm going to be bringing in some stuff. Right before I get up to the desk, and this conversation will take all of two seconds. And usually I'll just, you know, I'll ask them, where do you want me to put them? And they'll tell me. Um, right before I get up to the desk, somebody darts in front of me and jumps in front of me to go to ask the person a question. And the question they ask is long and convoluted and takes forever. They will whip right in front of me. They know damn well I'm coming. They get right in front of me to get to the person first. And then I end up standing there one time, I, I, one of the times I came in, I had my hands full, I was visibly struggling, and this young guy, probably early 20s, just whips in front of me and proceeds to ask all of these questions like, are you serious? I stood there struggling with that shit for 10 minutes. I finally just gave up. I went, I, okay, you know what? I'm putting these where they told me to put the last ones. I'm going to start bringing them in. My, I'm parked out front. I'm, I'm parked in a no parking zone. I do not have all damn day. Three of the four times that happened. One time I was able to actually walk up and I didn't know how to behave. Like, oh, oh my God, I can just, I can just tell you. And what I have to tell them takes two seconds. Hey, I got presents. Where do you want them? That's it. That is it. Of course, the person pulling in front of me in line doesn't know that. It still irritates me. Like, hey, I got a 
quick question. Um, what's the meaning of life? Damn it! You had to whip in front of me to ask him that. I hate you and I don't even know you. Merry Christmas! You're ruining my Christmas cheer, you asshole. Three of the four times this year that happened. I don't remember that happening last year. I don't remember that happening a single time. And it reminds me of this, um, this one time. People, teach your children door etiquette. And I, I, I went out of my way to teach my children what I refer to as door etiquette. So many people, and it's not just young people. I see grown ass people who have no door etiquette. What is door etiquette? Okay, and this is what I teach my kids and I want y'all to listen to this and I want you to do it. You young people, if nobody told you this, you were not raised right, no offense to your parents or guardians, but you should have been taught this. No matter who you are, I don't care. Man, woman, old, young, don't care. If you, okay, so you're approaching double doors. And I run into this all the time. It irritates the hell out of me. Keep right. Pretend you're driving a car. Go in through the door on the right. When you exit the building, go through the door on the right. Every damn body is trying to go through the wrong freaking door. And it irritates me. It's like everybody it's just chaos if everybody will just keep right the traffic will flow through there just fine but no no i gotta go through the door on the left because i'm special i came through that door i'm gonna go back out that door no dumbass treat it like a highway keep right it, it just galls me it just chaps my ass especially if i have my hands full and i'm trying to get that damn door open that's another thing don't care who you are i don't care whether your shit stinks or not, I don't care how rich you are, I don't care how famous you are. If you are walking up to a door and you see someone struggling, you can see that they have their hands full, I don't care who they are. Hold the door for them. Take a half a second out of your precious day and hold the door open for that person. Now they may or may not say thank you. A lot of people don't. Do it though because it's the right thing. Just, just do it. Sometimes it's okay to do things just because it's the right thing to do. Not because you're gonna get something out of it, but just because it's the decent thing to do. Hold the damn door open for them. My God. And if you have two sets of doors and you can, and you know, get the other door for them too. I do it all the time. Hold the door open for them. You don't have to make a big show of it. If there's somebody coming behind you, pause for a second and hold the door so it doesn't slam in their face. It's, it's simple. I mean, it is so simple. It, it takes no effort. It takes no thought. It's just a habit that you get into. And I am ashamed at the number of parents who did not bother to teach their children this basic stuff. I don't know at what point everything fell apart. You know, in generations past, parents took the time to teach their children manners. There are no manners anymore. When did it fall apart? When did people stop doing that? I was taught my, my manners and I have done my best to teach my children manners and how to behave, how to conduct yourself in different situations. You know, just because you're a child doesn't mean that you get to act like a dick. That's how I feel. I don't like that excuse. Oh, they're young, mm-mm, no. At what age is that no longer acceptable? Well, if you don't teach them before that age, they're not going to just start magically doing the right thing at that age. You have to teach them from the time they're small and lead by example because you have to you have to behave yourself too. If you don't behave yourself, they're going to they're going to they're going to watch what you do more than they're going to listen to what you say. I hold the door for people. If I see someone struggling with something and I can help them, I help them. You know, I I, I don't do it because I want anything. I do it because I just feel like it's the right thing to do. It reminds me of this one time. I was mad as hell about it now, and I still it still pisses me off to think about it. My younger son, when he was about 10 years old, he was getting ready to get braces. And they wanted, he had a baby tooth that had not come out yet. And uh, the orthodontist wanted to get it pulled because it wasn't showing any signs of like ever coming out <laughs> so I had to take him to get his tooth pulled and they knocked him out they gassed him up completely and knocked him out now they told me that it would wear off 
and that he would, you know, he'd be fine. Well, it didn't wear off as fast as they said it would. And the, the assistant or whoever she was comes out there with my son just knocked out, like slung over her shoulder, basically. He's like a sack of potatoes. He is out cold. And she's like, here's your son. And I'm looking at it like, what's wrong with him? Oh, he's fine. He'll wake up shortly. He's, it's just taking a little bit longer, but he's all right. Just take him home and, you know, he'll wake up soon. And he did. He was fine. But um, here's what would have helped a lot. So she passes him off to me and just leaves. Well, this, this dentist's office, it was an oral surgeon. The, their office had these two sets of very heavy double doors. Like, so, even if you don't have your hands full, it is hard to push those doors open. So I have, have you ever held like somebody who's out cold like that, just dead weight? They feel about three times heavier than they do normally. It is, it is like holding a big sack of potatoes. And he, he is, he is a tall boy. He's not, you know, he's really skinny, so he doesn't weigh a lot, but he's just long, you know, and I'm like trying to, I am struggling. I got on a coat. I got my purse over my shoulder and I have this kid like, and I'm holding him in a bear hug, trying to get him out the door. It would have been really nice if somebody, if she had just taken a second to hold the door open for me, it would have helped a lot, but she was gone, man. She passed him off and she was, I turned around, she was gone. There was just nobody. So I am waddling with my knocked out 10 year old like this with a mouthful of cotton, him, not me. And I'm waddling to the door and I managed to uh, get that first door open and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, and I'm thinking like, how the hell am I gonna get him in the car? How am I gonna get the car unlocked? I didn't have the automatic clicky thing on this car. Like, how in the hell am I gonna get him in the car? Damn it, that it would have been really great if this the, the lady who brought him out had just taken like a minute of her day to help me with this. I guess she didn't think about it. Like I'm there by myself with my kid, but I, I get that first door open mm, and I see this teenage boy come and walking up the sidewalk headed toward the building. I thought, Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. So I just barely get that door open and here he comes through the first door and he just walks on in like I was holding the damn door open for him. I said, oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad I could help you out with that. And he just looked at me like, what the fuck is your problem? And he just rolled his eyes and walked on like, what the hell is wrong with people? I mean, I realize my problem is not your problem. But if you see another human being struggling and there's something you can do to, you know, take two seconds out of your day and make it a little easier for them, why would you not do it? I just, I don't understand. Why would it not even occur to you to do it? You know why? Because you were not raised right. And I'm here to help. I'm here to help you. Pay attention to what's going on around you. You need to do that anyway. That's another thing I notice a lot of people don't have is situational awareness. People do not pay attention to anything. They are so oblivious to everyone. Pay attention to what's going on around you. And if you can help somebody, you know, hold a door, do something for them, you know, do it. Just please, you know, come on. It would make the world such, it would be a much better world to live in if we would all just do that. But a shocking number of people don't. It's, it's, it's as a, a lack of situational awareness. It's self-absorption, feeling like the world revolves around you. It's just, it's, it's a combination of things and it just, it's depressing. So mind your door etiquette and be a good person. Don't be a shitty person. Pay attention to what's going on. All that good stuff. I'm just lecturing you today. I'm sorry. I'm out running errands. I was actually going to go to the little thrift store, but I saw somebody's car in the parking lot, and, and I recognized it, and I didn't want to go in there while they were in there. So I decided, excuse me, I decided I would come up to Goodwill and drop off some stuff. It's stuff the little thrift store wouldn't want. It's like my cast-offs. It's still decent stuff, but the, the little thrift store... It's not nice enough for the little thrift store. I took them a bunch of Christmas sweaters the other day. They were so excited. <gasps> Christmas sweaters? They had them all put out, tagged and put out before I even left. And people were looking at them like, oh, aren't they cute? I have way too many Christmas sweaters. Like, I have to get rid of some of these sweaters. This is ridiculous. I had so many that I'll have to start wearing them December 1st. And even then, I don't know if I would have had enough days to wear them all. 
So I went through my collection and I got rid of some. Like they're all cute, but I don't need all these sweaters. So I, I figured I'd come up here and drop this stuff off and maybe by the time I get back, that person will be gone. It's not that I don't like them. You ever just not want to talk to anybody? And this, this is just a very chatty person, and I, I saw their vehicle, and I said, no, let's wait till they leave to go in there. Because it is it is a little thrift store. It's little. So, you can't just hope that you want. Now, you'll see them. You go in there. They're going to see you. You're going to see them. I'll just come back. I'm going to go run this errand, come back. Maybe they'll be gone by the time I get back. So, I don't have anything for them except those big bags. I do have the big bags that they gave me all the, the clearance rack stuff in. I did remember to throw those in the trunk so I can give them those bags back. So that is my Tuesday. I'm kind of taking it easy today for the rest of the day. I think I'm going to try to just take it easy. I do have to go get some groceries though. But I'm trying to not do a whole lot. Like I'm just, I'm tired. I'm just, I've been trying to do too much and I'm just tired. So I'm going to take it easy as much as possible today. I do have an exercise class later, but I have a while, so I'm good. But thank you so much for being here. I hope your Tuesday is going fantastic. Mine is mine's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.